Good morning. This is Pastor Samson. Because Sunday morning service, let us pray. Spirit of the living God, in this room, in the name of Jesus, first and foremost, we come, Lord, to say thank you, Lord. All over the world today, we ask that you heal, touch, bless, lead, guide, direct church services. Lord, win souls as you have appointed and anointed. You said that we, that we lift you up, you would draw all men. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, to every church service this morning, all over the four corners of the earth, Lord, we ask, Lord, that each pastor lift you, Lord, with a consistency of faithfulness and on the true doctrine, that all souls may be drawn to the salvation of the cross. For this is your servant, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. We want to look at and we want to start in Psalm the 23rd chapter. We want to come from the understanding that it is now time that man get understanding from God's word. Uh, God's word is, 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 is a footprint, a guideline, a direction for what God wants man to do. But we need to get an understanding that in man and in woman, there is a place called the soul. I'm going to start off at Psalms 23. Psalms 23 is titled, The, the, Lord, the Lord is My Shepherd. And then the, by the time we get to the third verse, he makes a profound statement. It says, He restoreth my soul. But just before he gets there, he said, The Lord is my shepherd. He said, The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me. We want, we want to put emphasis. He leadeth me. He's my shepherd. He's directing me. He's leading me. And he's wanting me to understand as my shepherd, as he gives me rest, he's dealing with a place within man and woman called the soul. And that place within man and woman called the soul if the soul is right with God, if the soul has been made peace with God, inside man, not the outside, we're not talking about the flesh, we're not talking about the world, we're not talking about Satan, we're talking about the soul which is life that God breathed in the man and he became a living being. If the soul has made it right with God, man or woman can be right with anybody else. If the soul has recognized and built a relationship with God, there is nothing, not money, not poverty, not life, not death, nothing can take that away from the man or the woman that possessed the understanding of that the soul that was given and breathed out of the mouth of God into the man or into the woman to give them what you call life. If that soul is being restored by God, and you truly have an understanding that that is the place within man or in woman that nothing, 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 nothing in the universe, not Satan, not flesh, not the world, nothing can touch man or woman. Not worration, not demons and devils, not how much money you got, not how you look, not color, what, what, what color your skin is. Nothing can touch man when the inside of man called the soul has been right with God. We need to stop right there and see a lot of men. You know, uh, uh, through the history of the years, and I don't know for how many years, uh, but through the history of the years at this time of the year, we always celebrate black history. And we hear about black history, and we have the programs, but let's really look at where the rubber meets the road. I'm talking to you as a pastor freed from not because I don't have shackles or not because I've never been beaten. I'm, I'm, I want to talk to you from the aspect of being spiritually free. I want to talk to you from the aspect of Travis Sampson knowing God Almighty through a relationship in his soul. And understanding that when I'm right with God, the world all in time, and anything can bring anything it wants to bring, but when I'm right with God in my soul, and I got a relationship with God in my soul, anything can come to try to pull me down, but I realize that according to Acts 5.39, that the thing about it is that when I'm for God and God is for me, ain't nothing can overthrow it. 
There's nothing can overthrow the God in me. So when my soul has come to a place in God that it does not have to be double-minded, when my soul has come to a place in God that I realize that it is being restored and now that I have a relationship, I can talk to God, walk with God, be with God, in the presence of God not only abides in me, but I abide in it. In my soul, when my soul has that kind of revelation and re relationship with God, I come to a place called there, and that place called there is called contentment. So whatever the world brings, in my understanding and me knowing God and God knowing me, it cannot touch the inner being of me because it belongs to God. We want to talk this morning. None of us today, I was talking about black history. None of us have felt what it was like to stand in chains to pick God. Or be beaten with a wheel. And, and there was a professor called Willie Lynch. And Willie Lynch was made to, was given the right to turn the, the, the Negro slaves at the time of the Emancipation Proclamation. He had the, 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 the task of turning them against each other. In other words, we got to turn them loose, but we want them bound. But then Willie Lynch began to travel the countryside. And he began to look, and when he went back to make his second observational speech to the, to the, to the slave masters, he went back and he told them, he says, I, I've seen a fear in these people. But he said, yet and still when they are oppressed, depressed, the more you oppress them, the more you press them down, he said, there's one thing that I find that there's something on the inside of them that, that I can't seem to wrap my mind around that the more you oppress them and depress them, there's something on the inside that looks like it's got to do with a faith and it's got to do with a hope. He says that when you oppress them and you depress them to the point that that faith and that hope rises up, when that faith and that hope rises up, they begin to say, oh, I want you to help me. He says well, at that point when they begin to sing that, there is nothing that a man can do to touch what's coming from the inside of them. Because what's coming from the inside of them is greater than what's happening on the outside of them. And I find that there's nothing man can do to oppress that. I'm here to explain to you this morning. That when we look back every now and then at our ancestors, and we look back at how they found freedom in the midst of slavery, I'm here to tell you it was in God. It was that they had and they got an understanding in their souls, of their mind, an understanding and a relationship of who God was, no matter what's on the outside. I can shut the outside out. And I can realize that there's a God on the inside of me. Giving me a faith and a hope that I can do better and there is better. And that one day that old song says, Oh Lord, I want you to help me. That one day he's going to do just that. But until I come wake up under the oppression and the depression, I'll stand with a faith and a hope coming from the inside of me that I'll shut out what's happening to me on the outside because I'll put my focus on God above and I won't put my focus on what I'm standing in, what I'm living in, what I'm bound to. I'll put my soul with a relationship with the God of heaven and that's where my focus will be because if I focus on what's going on around me, It'll be overbearing for me to carry. I brought this up because I want you to understand that there's always been places in the Bible that God has always told people, no matter what situation you were in, I want you to know I'm with you. So when you get understanding, the understanding is that every soul came from God. Ezekiel 18, 4 says, also, Come from God. In that, 
announcement that Ezekiel has just told us, Ezekiel 18, 4, that all souls come from God. I want to get understanding and give understanding that when people begin to focus not on themselves, but are focusing so much on God from the soul, they don't really worry about what they are in because their hope and their faith has gave them an understanding. I've got a relationship with God, and it's God that's going to see me through. So now, no matter what I'm going through, I'm not going to look at what I am. I'm going to plan for others. When you look at the Javier Tugmans, the Javier Tugmans was established with a hope and a faith, not only for the spree herself. Not only did she want freedom, but she wanted freedom for everybody else. So she didn't look up with a hope and a faith in, in the relationship she had with God. She looked up with a hope and a faith, not only for a relationship with the love of God, but she looked up for a hope and a faith in what I can do for my neighbor. So she made the journey. She didn't say, I, because I don't have a mule in a wagon. She didn't say, because I don't have a car. She didn't say, because I don't know how to read. She didn't say none of that. She made no excuses, because the faith and the hope and the relationship on the inside of her with God wouldn't let her draw back, but made her push forward. Say, because I can't do this thing by myself. i got to do it for others, too. And out of slavery, erupted and was steadfast established a heavier tugman out of the ashes came beauty called Martin Luther King out of the ashes they are people that the soul and the hope of the relationship that it builds with God takes them beyond themselves against all obstacles that will make them stand up no matter what they got in their hand no matter what they got in their pocket will make them stand up and realize that if God be who can be against me? No man can overthrow what God has established. So when we look back in the archives, in the history of the Bible, we want to do a little soul searching this morning. Because in that place called there, if we did not have men and women who understood that what God was doing on the inside, not on the outside, what God was doing on the inside Having a relationship with the soul to restore the soul, to set the soul free, is what loose a man to be free. That's why it says in the Bible, him whom the Son set free is free indeed. See, when the Son sets you free, when your faith and your hope and your relationship of your soul is right with God, there is nothing the world can throw at you to be to bound you. There is nothing the world can do to you to, to pull you down. When your soul is truly in that place called there, in that place called contentment, in that place called peace, in that place called rest in Jesus Christ, when your soul is truly in him, you realize that no matter what it is you are standing in, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. So when we go back and we look at the things that are exemplifying uh, and are examples to what the people did, not only for themselves, but for others in, in, in black history. We will realize that it, it was out the principle of the Bible. See, because when the slavery time was here, what you failed to understand was the only thing that the slaves had with a hope was not picking cotton. Not cropping tobacco, not wrestling for money and being a good wrestler. What kept them all with strength to press on? To be able to write a song saying, Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, a place of peace and a place of contentment and a place of relationship was birthed in the church. And that church gave them a hope for their soul. And when the soul was set right with God, there was nothing to master. There was nothing Willie Lynch. There was nothing uh, racism. There was nothing white supremacy. There was nothing they could do. They could hang them in a tree. And they still would be singing with a faith and a hope in their soul in a relationship with God Almighty. 
and there was nothing they could do to snuff it out. We've come this way by faith, leaning on the everlasting God. And we are where we at because our trust, our hope, our focus can never be snuffed out from the inside because that belongs to God. It don't matter what man does. If God be for you, if God is in you, ain't nothing can snuff that out because you have a commitment because the peace that is with him and working in us to be in him is greater than anything the world can dish out to you. So when we go back and we look in the archives of the Bible and some renowned men of God, that God chose that also had a inner peace with God, that also knew and had an understanding of what God was trying to do, also had a relationship as they served God against all obstacles. We want to read a couple of high points that those slaves that was wrapped in those chains being beaten on their back as we celebrate black history, we want to understand and have understanding that when the soul is right with God, mm, 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 when the soul is right with God, there is nothing in the enemy, there is nothing in the entity, there is nothing in the government, in the demon, in the devil, in the poverty, there is nothing that can dissatisfy the man or the woman that has a soul that's been redeemed by the Lamb. So when we go back in Exodus, God has a man of God that's going to deal with some slaves that God has chosen Moses to go get. And in Exodus 3, 11, it says, And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out, out of Egypt? Moses is saying, Who am I? God has chosen Moses. And Moses is saying, I, uh, Well, uh, I ain't got, well, who am I, God? You're going to send me to Pharaoh. Look at who Pharaoh is. Listen to what God said to him. Exodus 3, 12. Listen to what God said to him. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent, unto, sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am. Listen to that. I am have sent me unto you. When those Negro slaves would be taking that wheel, I am was a place of peace for them. When they was being bound in those chains, I am was a place of contentment for them. When Harriet Tugman broke free and said, this is it, I am gave her the substance, the understanding, the mind, and the love for a neighbor to say, I won't only make it for me, Lord. But if you let me through, I'll come back and I'll do it for others. When the soul is right in a man or woman, there is nothing can hinder him. Nothing anybody can do on the outside. Nothing the world can throw at them. Nothing the enemy can do to bring them down. A rope can hang them from a tree, it can't stop them. They can chase them with bloodhounds. Won't do anything. I want you to understand that every time the church has been oppressed through history, 
I am that was with Moses erupted out of the ashes to tell his people, I'm with you. And that hope that you got on the inside, you can act on that hope. Because if I be for you, who can be against you? When you look, all the odds are against Moses, going to the most populous, most strongest, most richest king. But I am in his presence that is with him. That is all things that Moses will need. In the soul, Moses knows what God is saying to him. It's true. The reason why I can tell you that is because Moses just didn't hear God. Harriet Tubman just didn't hear God. Martin Luther King just did not hear God. But they obeyed God and moved for God in behalf of others. Can I talk to you just for a minute right here? There must have been an inner peace going on in them, in their relationship with God that rose them above anything that man was going to do to them. I, I read the story about Dr. Martin Luther King, and it says that he didn't like to send his wife artificial flowers. But to say on the day or before the day that he got killed, it said he ordered artificial flowers and sent to his wife. It said he made a speech. It says he, in the speech, he says, I've been to the mountaintop. I might not get there with you as a people. But as a people, we will get there. He said, in my dream that I had, I see little black boys and little white boys playing together. Man couldn't take that away from it. His soul sat down at the table with God on a divine appointed time. God gave him a vision, gave him power in all adversity. March forward, Martin. March forward. And even when death struck everybody else and fear struck everybody else, Martin Luther King pushed forward because he said, I've been to the mountaintop. And I looked over. And in his soul, there was no hindrances. Because in his soul, in the relationship of what his focus was on, was not what a bullet could do for him. Not what man could do to him. Not what he was doing for man. But what he was doing for God towards mankind. Out of the ashes of white supremacy and racism, the whole a group of people bound, even though they had been set free, uprose Dr. Martin Luther King. His soul established in God. And he marched forward because he knew. I am that I am, and his soul was at peace in God. So therefore, it did not matter what man, what white supremacy, it did not matter what people were going to say, what people were going to do. It didn't matter about the bullet. Because in, on the inside of my soul, he was saying, I'm at peace with God. And this is what God raised me up for. You find in the Bible that when you find men and women that truly understand what God has done by restoring the soul and that truly has a relationship in God, you will realize that nothing can take their focus. When you got Joshua, who is the successor of Moses, you will find God in the first chapter of Joshua talking to Moses, and it says, he's talking to Joshua, he says, listen to what he said. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. He said, this book, this Bible, this what you have. 
He said, don't let it depart out of thy mouth. But thou shalt meditate day in day and, and night. That thou may have observed to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then shalt have good success. I'm going to have to read that again, Joshua 1 8. Because I'm trying to get the point across. That when a person is focusing on who God is, when a person's soul has recognized the purpose of God for the soul, when that, when that soul has reached a place of love and heart, soul, mind, and strength, when that soul in that man or that woman has realized that what God says is not a lie, Numbers 23, 19, he's not a man that he should lie. If he said that he would bring it back, if I am that I am is with you, what in the world can be against him? There are so many Christians on this journey that focuses on things on the outside instead of focusing on the spirit of God and what God is doing on the inside to try to bring that man, to try to bring that woman to a place of contentment, to try to bring that man or that woman to a place of peace, to try to bring that man or that woman to live beyond what they are in and beyond who they are and beyond what they see, to always focus on the God of the universe that is trying to restore, trying to have a relationship, trying to build a personal relationship with that soul that he placed on the inside of their body called flesh. Because if he can build a relationship with the soul, the soul, the heart and the mind, of bring the flesh, the world, and Satan under the authority of God Almighty. And nothing, nothing can fight against that peace that's on the inside of that person, male or female, that finds rest in God Almighty. This is just a couple of places I'm going to stop by to give you an understanding that everybody don't have the understanding of that God is dealing with the soul and if the soul gets right, if the soul is being restored, if the soul understands who God is, if the soul will let God lead, direct, edify, build on the soul. The soul can bring the man or the woman into an inner peace where nothing matters except my focus, which is on God Almighty. And him being I am that I am, meaning all things do whatever I need, because Peter will back me up. Peter says in Second Peter 1.3, he said, whatever is needed according to life and whatever is needed according to godliness comes through your knowledge of Jesus the Christ. I'm thinking some years back when there was slavery in the field that it was so oppressing, so depressing that they, in their minds they had to find that place. We are free. We've never had whips on our bikes. We've never had chains on our legs. We are free. And we can't find the understanding of the place that the slaves found. That when they wrote, oh, Lord, I want you to help me. Oh, Lord, come by here, Lord. Come by here. I need you, Lord. When they found that, they were singing to God out of a relationship of peace on the inside of them that nothing could squash out. Amazing grace was birthed from the ashes. These Negro, old Negro hills was birthed from ashes. It was birthed from the ashes of oppression and depression on the outside that something beautiful rose up from the inside and man had nothing to do with it. It was God 
rebuilding the soul of man, give them the faith, hope, and a new vision for themselves. So I'm going to read this again. Because the principle of what I'm talking to you about is based off the Bible. It's based off of what God will do for a man. When he sends a man like Harriet Tubman, when he sends a man like Martin Luther King, when he sends the people that, that will relate to God in the soul, there are groups of people that God used down through the history after slavery to birth different things, not for themselves, but for their people. We get hold to God and we get understanding that we got God for ourselves, but we don't understand that love your neighbor thing is it, 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 a must. Because Christianity demands that when your soul find peace, that you lead others to peace. Let me say that one more time. Christianity is not something that's a spectator sport. It's not somewhere you go. It's a reality of who you be. And when your soul finds peace, it's not going to rest. Till it pray for somebody, give to somebody, lay hands on somebody, love somebody, encourage somebody, lift somebody up, show somebody the way, restore the backslider, when your soul finds itself right with God, you're not going to sit down and say, I got it. Because Christianity has a power called zeal, Z-E-A-L, that's going to make you push your love for your neighbor because love is no good kept to itself. Love is only good when it travels to a person or a group of people. Jesus loved was not just for himself. The Bible says in John 3, 16, that his love was sent to move the world. So don't tell me that you're a Christian, but you ain't got no love to even move for yourself. See, because this is perilous times. If your love is not moving because of the color of somebody's skin. If your love is not moving because of the church you go to, you're not really on Christianity. You're on the spirit of error, but we're not going to touch that right now. We want to understand what it is when you truly have a relationship, truly have an understanding, truly have been edified, truly have the knowledge, the wisdom, and have gotten understanding of what it means when a soul truly has touched the love and the hymn of God Almighty. We want to talk about that because if I don't get nothing else across, I need for you to understand there is nothing like when your soul is right with God. I don't have to worry anymore. I take my burdens and pack them up daily. And I take them to the table of God. And I lay my burdens down and leave them there. The, late, the songwriter said, burn them down, Lord. Burn them down. He laid his burden down on God's table. Didn't have to carry them himself. Because in the restoring of the soul, God sent one. God made one. God directed one. To receive those burdens. So when we sit and we don't understand truly what it means to have peace made with God in the soul. We allow Satan and the world and flesh to steal our very identity. Because when you know something in the soul, can't nothing take it. Can't nothing take when you know something in the soul. You'll notice that when God sent Moses or Gideon, that when God sent Joshua, you will notice that even in terrible times, their focus was never on themselves. Each time that they came up against the obstacle, they would run to the presence of God. 
And when they would run to the presence of God, God would give them a vision of what he had given them in the soul. He asked Moses one time, he said, you need a bridge, Moses? Why are you talking to me? What did I put in your hands, Moses? What's in you? And Moses turned around, scratched out his staff, and said, Behold, the power of the Lord. God had placed in Moses, God had placed in Joshua, God had placed in Gideon, God had placed in David, God has placed in you, God has placed in you, God has placed in you himself. The part that says I am that I am not only has sent me this morning to you, but has sent himself for you to receive so that in the soul that he wants to restore, you will know him like Moses, like Gideon, like Joshua, like David, like Daniel, like Samson. He wants you to know him and that in him and in the relationship with him, there is peace. Contentment. And you don't have to worry about what the world is throwing at you. We're going to switch gears here in a minute, but I'm going to show you something. I'm going to read it one more time. This book. Look at it. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. This book. He only had five books then. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein. Thou shalt meditate therein. Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That thou may observe to do according to all that is written. He said, I want you to meditate day and night that you may do all that is written. Why, Lord? For then thou shalt make thy way. For then thou shalt make thy way. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then shall, and then thou shalt have good success. And then thou shalt have good success. We're going to turn on. We're going to go to judges. And I'm trying to tell you there's no respectable a person in God. That when you have a hope and a faith and a trust in God, we're going to turn to Gideon. We're going to turn to the sixth chapter of Judges. And we're going to go to the twelfth verse. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy mighty man of battle. Oh, I guess the one he's talking to is wondering. So then he said, And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? If the Lord is with us, why is this happening to me, Lord? Why is that happening to me? You, I, I hope you got the ears. Lord, in the name of Jesus, open up their ears that they may hear this. Lord, open up their ears in the name of Jesus that they may hear what you're saying to Gideon, that they may see they sell and how you are talking to them. Father, in the name of Jesus, open their ears, Father. Touch them, Lord, that they may have ears to spiritually hear what the spirit of this word is revealing to them. Listen to what he said. And Gideon said unto him, O my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? You know, you ask that all the time. Why does why this slavery happen if God be with us? Why am I going through all this if God be with us? Let's see what he has to say. And where be all his miracles, which our father told us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. I can hear people saying right now, He delivered us into poverty. He let us have this white supremacy movement against us. He's in captivity. He's got us in captivity where we can't find good jobs. Why is the Lord, if he's all loving, why is he doing this to us? 
in the low light, looked upon him and said, Go in this night, and thou shalt save Israel from the hands of the Midianites. Have not I sent thee? Have not I sent thee? He said, you go in. You, you asking me all these questions? He said, you go in this night, and I'm going to use you, the one with all the questions. I'm going to use you to save Israel. Watch this. And he said unto him, oh, my Lord. Wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, listen, listen. And the Lord said unto him, Surely, I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. You ain't get that, did you? The Midianites have an army, a well-organized army. They're terrorizing Israel. He said, God is telling Gideon, he said, what I'm going to use you to do, Gideon, I'm going to use you to do as one man. I will be with you. That's the key. I'm going to use you to do it as one man because I, God, will be with you, Gideon. Let me go on. And he said unto him, If now I have found grace, how many of us have found grace? In thy sight, which then show me a sign that thou talkest with me. Depart not then hence, I pray thee, until I come unto thee and bring forth my presence and set it before thee. And he said, I will tarry until thou come again. This is a representative that when God is with you, you are a minority. You're a majority. When God is with you, you're a majority. Because God is telling Gideon that my presence with you, Gideon, is going to be as one, if you are fighting as one man. Let us turn to Acts 5.39. I want to show you something. In Acts 5.39, and when your soul has found peace with God, when your soul is at rest in God, and that's what that's what your identity is, because you can have nothing from God unless your belief. Double-mindedness does not. See, see, when you are in a valley, like our slave ancestors, where they got nothing but oppression and depression, when it's forcing you to find that place, when it's forcing your soul to look beyond the position that it's in, when it's forcing your soul to focus on who God is and not on what you are in, you will find that place because you got, because you got nothing left. So you're grasping and you're reaching for a peace beyond yourself because what you are in is captivating. It's depressing you. And God reaches down into the ashes of the man or the woman that's standing in the circumstances and pour beauty called faith, hope, trust, and belief in him. And he established them in that place. And again I say nothing, again I say nothing can take that away from you when your soul has truly found God. Nothing can take that away from you. Let me prove the point. In Acts 5, we're going to go 38. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel of this work be of men, it will come to naught. If what they were doing was of men, it will come to naught. The oppression and the depression, the white supremacy, when God said we're supposed to love our neighbor, it don't matter what color it is. As we celebrate black history, we need to understand that whatever man is intending, it's going to come to naught because God is going to find final say-so. But if you can get hold to this next passage in your soul right now, if you can let your hearing 
have understanding right now. From this for from this time forward, marching forward, if you can understand what God in the Acts of the Apostle has been the case, say to your soul. If you can let this wrap around your heart, your soul, in your mind. You can march forward with a smile on your face with peace beyond understanding and contentment, understanding that he who cares for you, that if he be for you, nobody can be against you. So when I read this, I'm going to read it three times for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because I want you to understand that if your soul is in the right place with God, everything will be all right. If your soul is in the right place with God, he's already got it worked out. If your soul is in the right place with God, there'll never be any more put on you than you can bear. You don't have to be like a thermometer. You don't have to be up. You don't have to be down. You don't have to be up. You don't have to be down. You can stand steadfast on a sure foundation because no matter what come, Jesus has already disturbed principalities, rulers of darkness. He's already conquered the world. He's already overcome every sin. He's already bought you with a price. His blood stain drips down your salvation right now. If he be for you, if he is in you, great is he that is in the world, that he that is in you, than he that is in the world. You need to understand that God sent Jesus through love to establish your soul, to restore your soul, to put a place of contentment in your soul, to have a relationship in your soul with who he is, you being his people, and him being your God, your hope, your faith, your focus, your very spiritual being, your walk, your talk, your life supposed to speak that I know God in my soul because I'm content. So when you look, if you never knew this scripture, you need to write it down. Because let me tell you what God said. But if it be a God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let me read it one more time. But if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it. Let me read it one more time. But if it be of God, Ye cannot overthrow it. Least half heartedly, ye be found even to fight against God. Let me read it one more time. But if it be of God, you cannot overthrow it. Let me turn back to what he told Joshua from there. And he told Joshua, this book of the law. shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that it is written therein. For then, shall, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. I hope them two scriptures can sink in. Because down through the history, down through the history, the understanding that I was caught up in something that was overwhelming me, God wanted me to understand that he is my originator. God wanted me to understand as my originator, he wanted me to get understanding to obtain. He wanted me to gain possession, to reach, to obtain, to bring oneself into a condition, equipped, dressed, and empowered in their possession. That getting understanding. He wanted me to be equipped. He wanted me to be dressed. And he wanted me to have the power in my possession that's why he told me to get understanding, because when I get understanding, I will meditate on his word day and night. And she will make my way prosperous, because she will close me, she will equip me, she will dress me, she will empower me. She won't leave me trying to acquire, she will leave me having possession of. And that when you understand, when Proverbs 1.5 said, a wise man will hear 
and will increase in learning. And a man of understanding shall obtain unto wise counsel. What the slaves did, they did not look at the counsel of the masters. They looked at the counsel of God. And they took into possession in their souls. They took stripes on their back. But in the possession of their soul, they was equipped, they was dressed, and they was empowered in the possession of spiritual things of God. So when they beat them on the outside, it will overtake the pain on the outside because the greater thing for coming from the soul on the inside will smother out what was happening to the natural because the spiritual rose them up out of the moderate clay, bought from ashes, beauty, to have a new hope and have a new outlook and not worry about what I'm going through right now, but to press on to get to the mark of the high calling. I'm not going to worry about what the world's trying to bring me to worry about. I'm not going to worry about what the bills is saying. I'm not going to worry about what Satan is trying to show me. I'm not going to worry about what man says about me. I'm not going to worry about what my bank account looks like. My kingdom, where I'm from, being that Isaiah 9, I'm the increase of the government of God. My substance, where I come from, my way is prosperous because I meditate in my soul day and night on the word of God. And me meditating on the word of God and it directing my path is what makes me prosperous, is what makes me content. As God restores my soul, I keep coming to new levels of peace. I keep coming to new levels of hope. I keep coming to new levels of faith. I keep coming and standing on that Christ, the solid rock I stand. I keep understanding that if God be for me, there is nothing that can overthrow whatever it is that I'm in because his presence walks with me there. So therefore, I, I came to tell you this morning, with all our getting, we need to get understanding and be equipped, dressed, and empowered in the restoring of our soul to at least have what the slaves had because we've never felt a whip, we've never felt chains around our legs, and we think that what 2021 and what 2021 is doing is, is catastrophical. If you could trade places with them and see how they achieve their faith and their hope and their contentment, you will come to realize what I'm facing is a cakewalk. Their faith and their hope in God paved the way for me to be able to stand up without shackles. For me to be able to stand up without the wheel. Even though man might be trying to whip me into a position, God gives me a new position in all things that I see. I don't have to take what I'm looking at. I don't have to be tied to the worries of the world. God gives me a new hope, a new faith, a new trust, a new beginning because he's I am that I am to all people that come to a contentment in him and whatever is needed, he's there. Always has been. From the beginning of the Bible to the end of the Bible, he'll always be there standing with arms wide open saying, I am that I am, is here. This is Pastor Samson saying we hope that we brought you a good message, something to think about, something to get understanding about, something to fall in love with, something to allow you to find that place in your soul where God will restore you, give you new beginning, new focus, new hope. It's in him. Find him. Build a relationship with him. If you don't know him in the pardon of your sins, give him a chance to take over your life. You can always turn around and go back to what you were, but give them a chance today. Confess your sins. Believe that the Father sent Jesus to the cross to die for you. Claim him for your personal Savior today. He's standing beckoning now. Will you come? He's standing beckoning now. Will you come? He's standing beckoning you now. Will you come? All you got to do is repeat after me. I confess my sins. I believe that God, my creator, sent Jesus his son to die on the cross for me. I ask Jesus to come in and take complete control of my heart, my soul, and my mind. If you said that behind me, turn and confess to somebody.
that Jesus just saved your soul and set you free. This is Pastor Samson. Say we'll see you Tuesday.